In a few minutes, we've got Simon from Rocassa coming down to meet us at the workshop to talk about where we might be able to fit the CNC machine, which we've committed to buying. Now, Simon's invented uh, a new type of CNC machine, which is aimed at small workshops. It has a few specific benefits that we'll, we'll talk about when he's here. And our plan has been that we're gonna squeeze it into this space, get it up and running. And once we're seeing some more profit from using it, then think about moving uh, the space. We're thinking, can we realistically get it in here? We theoretically can get it in here, and we're thinking down the end. Um, but this job that's on at the moment is an example of how tight this space really can be, because we're making lots of big parts. Like I'm, I'm working here, Brady needs that workbench to work on, and then we've got the big parts that are being made. Um, which are all around the place. So if we're taking up all that back end with the CNC, it's going to be a stretch. So we, we were thinking maybe of putting it in here, but this is always full of stuff. I mean, this, this is more of the stuff of this same, same job anyway. And then you've got issues with leaking and stuff. Do we want a CNC machine in here? So because we're going to move, we've been thinking, well, shall we just seriously look for a new place because there is never a perfect time and it will always terrify me to think of taking on that rent now there'll be people watching this um like i'm expecting this from you ryan you're going to tell me don't move because um i've got it good here and we can we can be productive out of here we need to move for for personal reasons um partly the needs of my son we just need to get set up in a house um, that's nearer to certain places we want to be and that's just better suited to us as a family. And we've been putting that off for ages. So I'll stop waffling on, I think, and I'll cut in the footage next of when Simon's here and we're just talking through the possibility of fitting the machine in here. Um, and we'll, we'll see if that is a possibility. So this is Simon from Rakasa. Hi. Uh, Brady's just in the background there still doing some work. So Simon stopped by at the end of the day. He's been very busy getting the first CNC machine produced. Um, do you want to just tell us a little bit, Simon, about the design of it? We'll look at some pictures in a minute, but maybe just talk us through the concept of what makes this machine special. A lot of startup companies, um, high-end hobby, uh, hobbyists, had small units, not necessarily ideal. Uh, they were in back gardens. Um, and the access to the units were often either upstairs or, or around the back of a, of a house. So uh, we designed the machine to use primarily all aluminium construction and in a, a modular basis. So every single part, whether it's the smaller uh, 4x3 machine right up to the 5x10 machine, uh, can be broken down and it fits through a standard size um, door uh, and then reassembled on the other side uh, and it can be loaded into a, a standard uh, size transit van um, and two people can carry it to in the modular fashion to, to wherever it's going to be assembled. Shall we have a look at some pictures of it? Yeah, you, can, sure. you can talk us through them. Is that is that a sec that's a section drawing? Because when I first saw that's that, right, I thought, yeah. wow, how does that cantilever over there? But that's yeah. like a three D so, drawing that's sectioned off, isn't it? That's right. So that's with the um, with the left hand side um, removed, so you can see how it's constructed. And we're looking um, there at the that's what they call the gantry, right? So that's, that's right, what yeah. the, the cutting head runs along. That's right. So it's, it's belt driven. Um, there's no rail as such uh, on the on the gantry. It's um, it runs on the outside of the gantry oh. so if you actually want to upgrade uh, an existing smaller machine say the eight before you wanted a, a longer bed you only really have to lengthen the the gantry okay i remember you saying to me that the way that the head moves on it is similar to how a roller coaster sort of encases its track with wheels that's right, so yeah. that's what we're seeing there it's wheels all round. that's it yeah this section is being cut just beyond the part that would come down and That's roll right, yeah. on the bearing there. Yeah, yeah. So um, you, you in effect get the best of both worlds. They are quite expensive um, guard rails, so we just use the the guard rails on the on the shorter axis, not on the long one. Quite a lot of the CNC um, 
machine time is actually in the transit of, especially in smaller parts, from moving from one cut to the next. So it makes sense to to make the the longer axis the lightest axis. So you've, you're only in, in effect m moving that as opposed to the whole gantry. And so thinking about the distinctives of this machine, you've you've aimed it at the hobbyists and the small workshops, right? right yeah. So you're aiming this at affordability and you've done that by these kind of choices you're talking about where you're you're using less of this expensive profile yeah. and then you've put a lot of thought into the design of these aluminium parts which are very efficiently nested from yeah. the aluminium stock. But you're saying that in in the design that you've come up with there's actually benefits to it as well. So it's not That's just right, a yeah. sort of it's certainly not a substandard machine at a, at a cheap cost. It's an affordable machine with some clever features is what, That's right, yeah. what the impression yeah. I'm getting. So do you want to tell us about the, uh, you told me something about the, about the extraction before that goes around the cutting head. Is there a different view of that you could, yeah. or, or starting with this view if it's easier? Again, rather than having a, a, a large pipe that goes, usually it, it goes down the, the front of the, of the um, spindle. And what we're seeing here is the body of that's the, spindle, effectively yeah. what I think of as a router. That's but, it. Yeah, and then that's, that is the cutting tool there. That's right, yeah. Yeah, okay. What we've done is um, the tube actually comes in from the back, so it's easy to, to mount onto onto the ceiling or suspend. Mm -hmm. uh, and then four smaller tubes come down to the to the um, extractor head. And we're seeing there the, the part that was cut off in the section, so that's, that's what right, holds yeah. it down. Is there a reason why that that sort of leans back rather Backwards. than going straight down. Yeah, so to make it more efficient, uh, that is lent back so that the cutting head doesn't go off the front so you maximise the the space on the on the on the bed. And then the the construction of this, that's quite distinctive, isn't it? The whole bed. Because I, I've I've looked a little bit at CNC machines and realize that it's crucial for the bed to be rigid and flat and mm -hmm. that's usually done by it being one piece of i don't know if it's sometimes it's cast or some kind of a rigid structure which is part of the problem of getting it in in terms right. of weight and space to a small a small workshop but you've taken a totally different approach is that right yes yeah, it's, it's actually in uh, modular format so these in effect of you build the, the bed up first and they're made in, in modules and then they're clamped together and so oh, sorry to interrupt, but what we're sure? seeing here, this is this doesn't come as one piece. This full right. eight by four bigger bed. That's there is a split. There's a join in that there's somewhere. Three, is there three three joins. Oh, uh, two yeah. joins. Sorry. So there's three modules. And the material, it's from what you said uh, when we were talking earlier. I think the material is a sort of honeycomb. Is that right? Like a thin honeycomb. So that's it's right. like a sheet construction, which is fairly hollow inside, but braced that, somehow. Is that? <clears> yeah, that's right. It's um, it's two layers of aluminium. And then a uh, honeycomb mm -hmm. inside uh, when it's constructed, uh, and then there's a frame inside that as well. So, we're having a look now at whether we could fit the machine down this end of the workshop. What is the footprint of that, leaving aside any extra space you need? Whatever cutting size, because we've got 10, 10 by 5 or 8 by 4. Yeah. Um, so, we'd be getting an 8 by 4. Yeah, so you need a, a foot at the back yeah. and it's roughly 300 mil um either side of the of the cutting size so 600 mil on okay. top of the cutting size and a foot at the back when you say foot at the back what, yeah. which which is the back uh that's the back so that will take into account the when the cutting head goes back to its full extent of the cutting cutting bed uh the extraction oh yeah pipe and the conduit as well. So that's just where the electrical, that's where the power cable goes, right? That's right, yeah. So that's going to hang off up to a foot? Yeah, about eight, eight inches. So that's that's basically what, what an 8x4 machine would look like. So that would be an 8x4 okay. piece. If it, was, if it was tight into a corner here, yeah. allowing for the measurements you said, mm -hmm. would there be any issues with that? No, no. Uh, the only issue really is, is just the cleaning at the back of it um, and any excess uh, dust, dust and dust sort of, that would fly off yeah, yeah. okay the uh, vacuum bed is run by a, a normal um, 
vacuum pump, our volume vacuum pump, and that just sits on the floor. Underneath? That, that would fit underneath? Yeah. I see, okay. So we've got a minimum width, if we cleared out some of the racking and stuff, we've got a minimum width here of about 3.4 metres. That's pillar to pillar. So we're saying that that 3.4 is plenty yeah, yeah. for the length of the machine. We could probably just about have it in this corner and not have to mess too much with this router table. We could probably just about still use that router table. Not that it'd be a big, big deal to move it. How easy is the process of actually getting the thing into the space and set up? How many men are needed? Two people. Two people, yeah. okay. Uh, and roughly about two hours to, to get it assembled and and then it's just calibration after that. 